Sandra, the floor is yours. Sandra, you're muted. Yeah. Sandra, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Your mic is off. Uh... Sorry. It's okay. It Can was you... on mute. Sorry. Yeah, it was on mute. Mm -hmm. Sorry, yes. Can you reshare your PowerPoint now? Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. All right. Hello and welcome everyone to our master program information session at Solvay Brussels School of Economics and Management. We're very pleased to have you online virtually on board and uh, we're looking forward to give you um, a taste, a flavor of our Solvay Brussels School of Economics and Management experience. I would like to present myself very briefly. So my name is Sandra Rothenberger. I'm the Vice Dean of Edu Education, Innovation and Accreditation. And I'm also Professor of Strategy and Marketing at uh, the Solvay Brussels School of Economics and Management. Today, uh, we're going to give you um, an insight or information about the master programs. I will uh, lead you through um, the event. Uh, do not hesitate if you have any questions to use the chat. We will have enough time at the end <clears throat> of our presentation to uh, respond to your question. Um, again, um, as I said, I'm going to start um, a small introduction and then I will give the floor to um, the five um, uh, director de programme or um, uh, program director of each master to give you an even deeper insight of uh, what you can expect of the different masters. Biggest question remains, why doing a master at Solvay? And um, before um, we even uh, think about Solvay, the most important thing is to understand what is actually <clears throat> the vision, mission, and the values our institutional education, educational institution literally would provide to you. So when we talk about the vision, so the vision of uh, the SBSEM, which is the abbreviation of our school, is to be a top European school of economics and management integrated with a research-based university, combining a unique blend of scientific rigor, contextual engagement and problem-solving skills with an ambitious global reach. Um, this is quite ambitious, but we're striving every day, our colleagues are striving every day to at least go in this direction. What is a little bit more concrete, um, also in terms of the reason for being and why do we exist, our mission? We actually have a decisive and positive influence on how economic and business challenges are addressed. With a strong emphasis on quantitative methods, we produce pioneering research and educate women and men to become true leaders and entrepreneurs in their fields. And the vision and the mission are supported by our values. And just listen to those values, take them in, and also perhaps later on reflect on them in the different masters. Free inquiry. We try to challenge our students and also stakeholders to open their minds to a wide range of perspectives and adopt a critical attitude. Excellence, we all strive towards the highest standard of performance. Entrepreneurial spirit, which um, at uh, Solvi is uh, quite um, important. Oops, uh, that was my pilot. We expect all our stakeholders to demonstrate initiatives, innovation and leadership, multi multidisciplinary, we build on a full blend of university disciplines. We are embedded in the Université Libre de Bruxelles and our expertise in economics and management. 
equal opportunity. We try to provide access to students from all socioeconomic backgrounds, demographic, go demographic governance, Practitioners, academics, researchers, students and staff all have a voice in our governance. And last but not least, societal relevance. We try to nurture a long tradition of corporate social responsibility, ethics and diversity in public institutions and the business world. So in a nutshell, this is what we would like to provide you. This are our vision, mission and values, and we try to incorporate them in also our education and in our teaching. We're striving for excellence, especially when it comes to education. We actually try to reason and reflect um, on uh, topics. Diversity of teacher and students are very important because we have international students, we have international teachers from all over the world. We actually um, have a quite uh, good uh, cooperation between practitioners and um, people more coming from academics. We also strive to always challenge ourselves on innovative teaching methods and approaches. Therefore, we once a year organize our Innovation Education Day, where we always try to understand what are the teaching methods of tomorrow. And last but not least, everything supported by a quality seal, which are the accreditation, Equus and AMBA, and ASCSB is in pro process. So we are aiming for the triple crown accreditation, which again justifies the quality of our school and also for the future to become a better school. The reputation of our degrees. Again, as I said, we have five masters and I come to that um, a little bit later. We did a small survey <clears throat> based, on some, based on some student uh, sharings. And um, just to give you an idea what kind of outcomes will be um, when you literally uh, fulfill um, the degree. So consultants, entrepreneurs, brand managers, analysts, aud um, auditors, um, you can become um, statistic analysis, um, you become um, um, consultants in economy and so on. Again, when we come back to the reputation of our degrees, it's um, a very good mix between um, uh, um, languages. So English um, is for sure um, one of the main teaching and um, education language. Um, we actually also foster a program exchange. We offer double um, diploma. We have a quite interesting international network with partners and cooperation, which is called QTEM. I come to that in a moment. And of course, we offer internships, accredited internships throughout your um, stay with us at the Solvay Brussels School of Economics and Management. Already when you start to think about what will be my decision for my master, always look at the so-called career objective. The time is now already to think now for what you perhaps might become in the future. And also here we have support. We have a very young dynamic um, student um, um, uh, team who uh, will try to um, support and also follow you throughout uh, your um, studies. So professional support, um, they will help you to define your career objectives. There are quite many events planned throughout um, the year um, also regarding your career development. Um, they offer you direct contact between students and potential employees and also uh, to support to find internships during your master uh, program. If you would like to get in contact with them, they are quite um, easy to reach. Um, Solve Career Services at ULB. Uh, dot B. Now let's go into uh, media three, now our masters. So again, what we offer, we have five masters. So we have one master in business engineering. We have one master in management science. We have three masters in science economics, which are literally divided into business economics, economic analysis and European policy, research in economics or research um, in economics and statistics. So you see a quite interesting program, which again will just help you uh, or help us to um, educate 
um, uh, you for the future. Again, to give you a small snapshot, many opportunities for you. As I already said, um, our five masters um, uh, are offering still a little bit of French, but mainly education and teaching language is English. Um, there are possibilities in four master programs uh, to um, participate in a uh, program exchange. We have three masters who are fostering the so-called QTM. And here, just to give you an information about the QTM, um, the QTM is a quantitative techniques for economics and management network. We right now count 24 academic partners where you have the possibility either to do two exchanges, international exchanges, or one exchange and one accredited internship. It's a quite um, reputated and qualitative program and also gives you again the possibility to gain international experience. And as you can see, 24 very um, uh, reputable um, 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 university partners um, throughout uh, the world. Again, we have also the possibility with four master programs uh, to offer um, internships. Um, and uh, last but not least, with two universities in Italy, so um, Politecnico di Milano um, and uh, Luis Guido Cali in Rome, um, two uh, possibilities of doing a double uh, diploma in ingénieur de gestion and business, so business engineering and um, economic analysis and European policy for the Rome University in Luis, Luis Guido Cali. Sorry for that. All right, guys, let's go a little bit into um, the description of the masters. Um, and again, uh, we'll just give you a short snapshot because I will then give the floor to um, uh, the uh, program directors who are also um, today in our virtual room. Um, so again, let's start with the master in business engineering. So again, uh, we have here a master which actually prepares future executives leaders and entrepreneurs for opportunities in any type of industry and organization, such for instance, profit, nonprofit or public institution. What we literally try um, to strive is to give you the ability to understand and engage in all areas of biz business administration and also to understand the main roles and departments of an organization and interact with them. What are the skills you will develop? Um, again, here in strategy, finance, marketing, management, control, human resources and leadership, operations and supply chain, innovation, information systems and digital business. We also try to give you some key skills, um, which again are going into the idea of um, information skills, problem solving skills, project leadership skills, personal management skills, communication, business ethics skills, critical thinking skills, entrepreneurial drive, teamwork, and last but not least, also self-management. What is the outcome? Where are you going after fulfilling and completing successfully the master in business engineering? Potential executives in all types of organization, management or strategy or IT consultancy, auditors and management controller, entrepreneurs, financial analysis, experts in mergers and acquisition, brand or product manager, and in the field of marketing or distribution. So a quite interesting plethora of possibilities when you literally fulfill your master in business engineering. The next master is the master in management science. It's again also a quite demanding program that actually tries as the business engineering to train students in all core disciplines, um, especially related to business management. Um, it actually has an international focus, again, in the public and private sector, multidisciplinary approach, including law and data analytics, combines academic rigor with practical relevance. Um, again, what kind of uh, knowledge and skills um, are we going to offer you managerial economics, but also advanced managerial decision making? And there is a large choice of options, which actually allows the students to pursue um, an intellectual interest in various disciplines of management or practice, um, which actually also will lead you to the following outcome, executive positions in any type of organization and sectors, management and strategy cons and IT consulting, auditing or management control, entrepreneurship, and also commercial management. Our next master is the Master in Business Economics. 
And again, also here, um, we um, try to develop and train students to become applied economists, policymaker, consultants, and business professionals in the sector and job required technical analytical skills. It actually um, tries to give you an update quantitative and conceptual tool for economic, statistical, and financial analysis and prepares you for policy and business practice. It develops uh, the students' grasp of business, economics, and policy issues and highlights their interaction um, when it comes to financial uh, um, and finance uh, regulation, strategy and competition policy, regulation, and lobbying. And again, you will be trained um, especially for international public or private organization, including NGOs, as strategies or economic consultants, auditor and management controllers, business and business analysts and IT consultants, regulators or analysts in policy think tanks, executives in the financial, industrial and services sector. We're coming then to the master in economic um, analysis and European policy. And again, what is this master trying to uh, train and also to educate future business economists, policymakers, consultants, and more generally professionals for sectors and function that require technical and analytical skill. Again, what kind of tools will you um, learn throughout this master? Financial tools, economic, economical tools, statistical tools to doing statistical analysis. Um, we also try to uh, expose um, our students in this master to practical application in the economic and financial world. Um, it addresses all the economic issues, employment, competition, growth, development and redistribution and all aspects of economic policy issues, industrial, sectoral, national and, go and global. Again, what are the uh, um, uh, outcomes of uh, completing a master in economic uh, analysis and European policy? A political advisor, analyst, analyst in economic policy think tanks, assessment of public policies, consultant in economics or strategy, analyst in national, international, public or non-governmental organization, economics in the financial, industrial and service sectors, auditor and management controller and business analysts and IT consultant. Our last master is the master in research, in research uh, masters in economics and statistics. The research masters in economics and um, um, economic statistics provide uh, the students with a theoretical and statistical toolbox to pursue advanced analysis in research um, in economics. And again, here uh, we have two different flavors. So the master in research and in economics provides general training for all areas of economics and also um, offers students the possibility to specialize at the boundary between economics um, and um, statistic. And again, here, most um, of these graduates uh, who will complete this master successfully um, start a PhD. So again, if you would like to continue your continue your academic career, this is the master to be in our e economics, rather in ECARES, um, which is our very known um, research center, European Research Center for Advanced Research in Economics and Statistics, or if you opt also um, uh, abroad. And again, here, what are, let's say, um, the outcomes of this training? You can become a researcher or professor in a research institute or university, economist in international institutions, specialized consultant, or even a financial professional. Again, you will be quite amazed that we have a quite good understanding of what our students are becoming after um, their completion of the master. So every year, the Solvay Brussels School of Economics and Management also does um, a survey uh, with their alumni to understand uh, where our students um, are heading to and going to. And just to give you an idea that uh, we also uh, track um, uh, diversity. We also try attract the employment rate. So just to give you a small um, um, insight, so um, it is it is high, and almost all of our students are employed within a year. You, so you can see um, we are quite um, a good institution, well reputed, especially um, when it comes to um, our employment rate in um, the first year. 
All right, so I would like to not spend too much time because I have my experts who are ready to um, go a little bit deeper in the different masters. So again, here are the important contexts. So I would like now to give uh, the floor to um, the first um, uh, program director who is going to explain uh, the master in uh, business engineering. Uke, the floor is yours. Thank you, Sandra. I'm just going to share my slides. Yes. So welcome, everyone. Uh, my turn is to a little bit go into more details on the business engineering program. Um, it's a program which, uh, compared to the others, tries to focus on the, the link between management and technology. And so every program, as you will see, has, has a vision and an objective. And this one is clearly about trying to uh, combine a quantitative mindset, but in the domains of technology and management, and trying to join them together. Um, in terms of competences, uh, every program, and this one is the same for, us, uh, for everyone, has uh, learning goals and objectives. And as you will see, we, we are really focusing on the entrepreneurial spirit, the critical thinking, the academic mindset, the skills you have analytically, and also professional skills, obviously. In order before to go into the details of the timeline of what the master uh, represents, um, let me show you a little bit the type of uh, companies in which graduates work. So as you can see, you have mainly, I would say, management consulting, IT services, uh, digitalization, financial services, accounting, uh, marketing and advertising, consumer goods, real estate. Of course, these are the types of companies. It doesn't mean necessarily that's the type of functions that they do perform inside those companies. And so here you can see a little bit the real main field of activities that our students pursue. This is based on, the, on a survey uh, from our Department of um, Competences follow-up and, uh, and on the alumni. And uh, as you can see, uh, finance represents, I would say, uh, a little third of uh, the functions that our uh, students go for. Data analytics, which is growing uh, currently. Management in general, management consulting, and I would say uh, a lot of other topics, as you could see, that we cover quite a diverse set of industries. The idea of our students, once they are in the industry, is to be, at the beginning of their career, uh, the best link between the top management and the technological people. And so to be really a good interface between those two uh, levels of the company, to sectors and, and obviously uh, communication skills uh, around those uh, competences are really important as well. Um, if I look at the timeline during the year, I, I think this is important that you, you have a, as a perspective. So we don't talk anymore about years one and year two, we talk about blocks and accumulation of credits. So you can see we have four quadrimester um, this four quadrimester can be uh, taken in two different tracks, and these tracks are exactly uh, almost similar, except that, as you can see, the, the exchange can be taken in the first quadrimester of the second block or in the fourth uh, quadrimester. For the rest, these are, this is, in fact, one track. And so you start with a quadrimester of compulsory courses, 30 credits of compulsory courses. Then the second quadrimester, you have 10 credits still of compulsory courses, which needs somewhere the competences of the first one, and 20 credits of electives. Uh, it's very important to know that in this uh, new framework of uh, Angers, um, you are staying in here, here uh, in the first year which is quite uh, interesting also to be able to, to know each other and, and to mingle, of course, with those of you who are coming from another bachelor than the ones of Solve. So you are here for an entire year uh, in which you also initiate your preparation for the thesis. 
And then you start with block two. In block two, you will either choose to go in an exchange on the fourth, on the third quadrimester. Um, there is still a slight, uh, I would say, difference. Um, as from this year, in fact, if you take the, the exchange in the third quadrimester, you can also opt for an internship instead, but with an international exposure. Uh, the second block is also the year where you realize your, your perform, your work, your research work on the thesis, and you write your thesis and you defend it. Um, apart from uh, the exchange or the internship, then you are left with a series of seminars for 10 credits, so two seminar, uh, a seminar of strategy and a field project, um, and five uh, credits still of compulsory courses in uh, a course of uh, organizational behavior and leadership. It is important to note that as we name elective the 20 credits of the Q2, um, in total, you have a lot of flexibility still because in, in the exchange, you have 25 credits, which you can choose in the list of courses of the visiting institution, which means that's 45 in total. And also in the seminars, in the field projects, you can opt and give your preferences. And those projects are, uh, in fact, real internships in real projects. So the seminars really represent an opportunity to, to be facing the real world, and, uh, but as an internship, but at the same time in a very dedicated uh, objective. Uh, typically, uh, our students pitch to top managers about key strategic uh, projects. When you look at this in terms of competences, in terms of courses as well, look at the colors. So compulsory courses is light blue, seminars is uh, hard blue, and experience and Erasmus is the yellow, and electives are in orange. So when you move to the different competences, what you see is that we have a big competence of uh, finance, accounting, and control, one of entrepreneurship strategy and governance, one on technology and operations management, and one on marketing. These are our four big tracks, and in those four competences, you can see that in Live Blue you have the compulsory courses, so all these eight courses must be uh, done during uh, the program, plus a ninth one, which is the OBL. Uh, sorry, the OBL here, um, which is organizational behavior and leadership. Then you have seminars of strategy, so you have to choose one, so you can give your preference about which project, uh, which, core, which strategy seminar, and so you have five of them. And as well, you have business field projects, uh, which are uh, internships, in fact, for a project that you will be working on during your quadrimester. And they are mostly in strategy, governance, entrepreneurship, but also in other topics as well. You have to have five credits of them. So it means that you have here uh, 45 credits of uh, uh, compulsory courses and two times five of two seminars, including the, 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 the seminar, which is in fact an internship on a field project. And then in terms of electives, you have a very, very brief freedom in the sense that you can choose two uh, modules. You have to choose two modules among the many modules you see here, and they are shown by, by competence. So you have two modules in marketing, three mod uh, two modules in, uh, in TOM, in technology and operations management. You have three of them in entrepreneurship, and you have five of them in accounting, finance, and control. Um, and in fact, the idea is that those courses are really uh, integrated courses together. So the professors who, who teach those courses know each other very well and are very complementary. And so you, you have to choose your modules. And the good thing about it is that you can either choose to take two, two modules in the same competence to specialize yourself, or you can decide to be uh, taking a, a competence which you are maybe um, in, in the sense of diversifying which you have not been maybe investing too much until now, or depending on the Erasmus also. Remember that on Erasmus, you can choose 25 credits uh, abroad, so or around five to six courses. So depending on what you choose on Erasmus, you can diversify and choose here all your modules as well. 
that's the idea. The particularity of Angers is that we, of course, have full-time professors who will be dedicated to you during your uh, uh, passage uh, through our program. Um, but in this journey, you will also meet, I uh, would say, at least half of the courses are taught by practitioners who are very good pedagogues. Here you have some of them. And um, they have top positions in practice and either complement the course, either teach their own courses. Finally, um, as Sandra said, uh, you have uh, in every program the possibility to have extensions. You have the q extension, which was mentioned to you before. Um, and you have also, the, in, in our case, the extra double degree optionality to go to Polini and have two uh, degrees at the end by uh, mixing Polini and uh, Solvay. In QTEM, and just a, a few words about it. If you plan to do QTEM, there, there are two main frameworks. One, which is a QTEM with a one exchange. In that case, it's exactly the same program as AG. So you, you have an AG, but the exchange will be in a specialized destination of QTEM. In that case, it's exactly the same program, just with a specialized exchange. Or you can do the QTEM with a one big internship and one exchange or two exchanges. And in that case, you have to add a fifth uh, quadrimester to uh, this standard track of Angel. In any case, the good thing about it is if you choose for uh, the QTM extension, you are really following a full Angel program with an extension. And so you really get uh, to uh, stay with your colleagues and friends uh, during your, your studies. Uh, but you, you add this uh, particular specialization. Uh, finally, uh, I'm adding just a small detail to what Sandra said. Uh, you have the possibility for the, the entire school also, if you want to look a little bit at what is being produced, etc. We have been creating this year the survey times, and so if you want to learn more about some of the, the things that the school is doing, students, academics, professors, alumni, don't hesitate to look at the evolution of this journal. So thank you for your attention. That was everything about uh, Angé. And so I give the word to my next colleague. Thank you. Okay, welcome. Welcome to the Master in Management Science. I'm Evelyn, Evelyn van Poeke, director of this um, master. So um, what is this master about? Well, the idea of the master is to develop, to develop international managers for any industry or sector, public or private. So very broad, and it does not only mean the commercial sector, but also social enterprises, humanitarian organizations. So we see it broader than just commercials, commercial organizations. Yeah, what we offer is that we combine academic rigor with practical relevance and you will see that we will um, have lectures coming from academia, so professors, but just like in Angers, we will also have business people who will bring you some of uh, the lectures. Yeah? So it will be a mix of that. We will also focus on advanced management knowledge. So you will see that um, in the course uh, layout and in the names of the courses, you will see courses like advanced accounting, advanced marketing. So these are really um, advancing your knowledge in management from the bachelors. And we take into account an international uh, perspective. Um, as well as a sustainable perspective. So the master is very international in, in, in nature, not only in terms of courses, so we will discuss a lot of international aspects in the master, but also in terms of 
um, students attending this master. You will see um, there are a lot of uh, people coming from abroad to attend this master. So there will be a lot of students from our bachelor in um, business economics, but we also have a lot of students from all over the world, Italy, um, um, uh, the UK, even the US, uh, Africa. So there are a lot of international, there's a, a, a nice international flavor to that program. That's also why we offer the complete program in English. Yeah. And recently we also decided to go into this sustainability perspective. Um, we are currently developing uh, sustainable pathways just like you had in your bachelor, but we also do that now in the master and uh, try to, to stress the, the, the sustainable aspects because as a business leader, we also think these are important in your decision making. What is now the program or how does the program look like? Well, in your first year, you will have some advanced or most of your courses will be advanced management courses. So you will have a course on advanced marketing um, strategy, advanced finance, accounting and also organizational behavior. Yeah. Next to these management courses, we will also offer you quantitative and economic skills because we also think these are important as a manager to have these basic skills. And what are the courses um, that are offering that? Well, we have a course on research methods helping you to do research, but not only in a very research environment, but also more in a business environment. However, using the same type of techniques, but making a little bit the translation. Managerial economics, another course um, that is uh, really key in the program. And then, of course, data analytics. Yeah, um, important because as a manager, we expect you to take decisions based upon uh, data and um, uh, making this link from data to management is really important here. And then, of course, the international context of the whole program um, is also an asset and a, a very important course in this is business law. This will help to, to look at the environment, um, the broader environment um, in an international uh, context. Yeah? In the first year, you also will have to choose a specialization in an international management track, and there are actually three specializations that we will offer to our students. Cross-border uh, entrepreneurship and innovation is one of them. Uh, a second one is global businesses. And then a third one is more focusing on the HR uh, aspects or people and organizations. Yeah. The second year um, is then um, uh, an international experience because well, we said we are an international program and as such, um, everybody will have to do an exchange or an internship. An internship will have to be in an international context. That does mean abroad or on an international topic um, um, uh, in a national company, but there should be an international aspect on it. We will also offer leadership skills because we think as a manager, it's very important to have some skills that you can count on um, if you have to perform your job. And we will offer you a block um, offering some skills that can help you uh, with that. And then, of course, a field project uh, to have the practical experience. The idea is that everybody should have at least one practical experience and you can have that practical experience based on uh, the internship or if you have not done an internship but have chosen the exchange program, you will have to do a field project in an area that you want and that will provide you a practical experience.
Yeah? And then, of course, the memoir, which you have in all the master uh, programs. So to make this a little bit more concrete, I um, have here a slide presenting um, the, the first block or the first year of the Master in Management Science for the first option. Um, so for cross-border entrepreneurship and innovation, as you see, there are 45 ECTS which are obligatory. Um, and which are um, the um, um, managerial courses um, taking the international perspective into consideration. Most of them are in the first semester and then three of them in the second semester. If you then go into depth into cross-border entrepreneurship and innovation as a specialization, you will have two core courses in there and then one elective course. Uh, course that you can uh, choose. Yeah. The other specialization is global businesses. Um, here you will focus on supply chains and global marketing and then again take an elective course. And then the third specialization, managing people and organization, will focus on HR, international HR, diversity, multicultural culturality and then again an elective course which is up to you. The second year, in the second year just like in all masters you will do a master thesis. You have the option to do an exchange or an internship and that's completely up to you to make that uh, a choice. And then, as I already said before, we will focus on skills because managers need some skills um, to perform their job. Um, and you have to choose two uh, skills. Project management is a compulsory one. And then you can choose among other skills like negotiation, negotiation coaching, business communication, or even a language um, as a skill uh, for those who want to extend uh, their language. Uh, knowledge. And then of course there's a field project in different disciplines, um, so it's up to you to make a choice on what you want to do uh, within um, uh, this, these field projects. It can go from a sustainable project um, on an NGO or sustainable development, but also on a startup, on entrepreneurship or even on HR uh, topics. Okay, hey, so that's it. I think most of the students, if we look at uh, where students end up, um, uh, it's very diverse, uh, not only in commercial um, companies, um, as I said before, but also in NGOs, consultancy, um, um, governmental, but then, then more like uh, NGOs in functions like marketing, um, HR um, and consulting, sales, uh, these type uh, of jobs. Thank you. <coughs> I think we can go now to the master in business economics. Yeah, Thomas, yes. the floor is yours. OK, so uh, welcome. I'm Thomas Munk. I'm the director of the master in business economics. So why, when do you want to study uh, business economics? Well, as Sandra has already said, uh, if you want to become an applied economist or a policymaker or a consultant or a business professional in some sector, and you would like uh, to do both technical and analytical skills, right? You need both. So what's so special about uh, business economics? Well, it's a combination of business and economics. OK, so we cover both business, economics, policy issues, and especially we have a focus on interactions. We also have a strong European orientation, which will be uh, more apparent later on. And you would uh, also try to combine both theory and practice. So if we have a quick look at where our students end up, well, we see that a lot of them end up in uh, finance, so banking or other financial services. 18% uh, uh, works for an accounting firm. 
a lot of our students also work for management consulting firms, uh, probably one of the big four, and then a huge variety of other sectors, which is IT services, insurance, education, and then a lot of others, okay? Um, so there's a huge variety at uh, where you want to end up and what you can do with this master. Okay, so quickly, uh, I just want to quickly present you the uh, program structure. So uh, as all masters in this at Solvay, there are two years, so two blocks, which together make 120 uh, credits. So uh, a big part of these credits, 45 uh, credits, are compulsory courses. I will be in give more details later on. Then 25 credits uh, will be occupied with your exchange and your or internship, one of the two. And then there are 20 credits uh, which are defined by your specialization that you will pick. I will also give more details later on. Then there's the, the thesis of 20 credits. Uh, there's also one optional course that you can pick. And then there's the field project, right? So this is the big overview of how the all the courses are structured in the program. Okay, so if I go in more detail, uh, then in the first semester of block one, all the courses are uh, compulsory courses. Okay, so there's not a lot of freedom there to pick. So there's econometrics, there's microeconomics, uh, corporate finance, uh, strategy, European regulation, and then game theory. Okay, so that's the first semester of the first year. In the second semester of the first year, there are three remaining compulsory courses, which is macro and finance, uh, accounting and data management. And then there's one optional course that you can basically choose whatever you want to choose. So for example, if you want to pick up a language course like Dutch, uh, this is the place uh, to pick it. And then there are 10 ECTS of specialization courses. And uh, as I said, I will give more details later on on what do I mean by specialization courses. OK, so this is the first year. Uh, as you see, there's a huge variety of both econ courses like microeconomics and macroeconomics, and there's then also a lot of uh, more business oriented courses like strategy and strategic analysis and so on. OK. So in the second year, in the first semester, normally the students go either on an exchange or they take an internship, right, which is 25 credits. And then in the second semester, uh, there's the field project, which is five credits and then uh, 10 remaining credits of the specialization courses, right? So you see in the first year you have 10 credits specialization courses and then in the second year you have another 10 credits. And then of course you have the thesis which counts for 20 credits and which normally spans the entire year. Okay, so that's basically the structure of this uh, program. So I already talked about the specialization courses or you can call them modules if you want to. Okay, so there are three different modules from which you can pick, okay, and these determine 20 credits in the master. So the first module is European Regulation and Economy. Then the second one that you can pick is uh, called European and International Business. And then the third one is Financial Markets and Services. Okay, and normally when you register for the master, you will uh, need to pick one of these three uh, modules, okay. And these determine 20 credits uh, of your specialization. So when should you pick uh, the optional block regulation? Well, if you uh, want to have a deeper understanding of, for example, the European economic integration process, right? And as the term regulation already says, uh, there's regulation in competition, there's regulation in industrial policy, in financial integration and in environment. OK, so. Uh, when do you want to follow this module? Well, if you're interested in a career in either some international or European level agency, but also if you want to work, for example, for a firm that gives advice for firms on regulation, right? Okay. So uh, 20 ECTS from the module, and these are uh, the overview of all the courses that you can take from the module, right? So basically, normally you have to pay, pick four of these courses, and you see there's course on taxation, there's courses on uh, European integration, on regulation, on cost benefit analysis and so on. OK, so all these courses deal in some respect uh, in terms of regulation. So that's the first module, the regulation. Then there's a second module that's international business. 
so you should talk, pick this module if you want to have a deeper understanding of uh, how businesses are conducted in European and international environments, right? So if you cross borders, then normally the legal jurisdiction changes. Uh, crossing borders also uh, means that you have to think about how to divide the value chain of a firm over uh, different countries or how you design an optimal entry strategy if you want to go to a new market or a new country. Right? So if you want to work for an international business and if you want to travel a lot, this is the module uh, that you need to take. So here are a couple of courses or here are the courses that you can pick from the module. So you see that there's trade, uh, there's also global marketing, right? So this is more a business oriented course. This is a course on diversity and multiculturality. There's international supply chains and so on. OK, so even a law course on international contracts. So all these courses have to do with the international business, but from a variety of angles. And then finally, this is the I think the most popular module uh, chosen by most of our students. So that's the finance uh, module. So this one you should pick if you want to have a deeper understanding of uh, financial intermediation. So the different actors that play on financial markets, also the different kind of financial products, the different techniques that you have to use in order to analyze these markets and so on. So the goal is to learn all the skills that you need to understand financial activities, all the tools to approach them, and you should pick this module probably if you want to work for a financial institution or uh, also maybe for a financial regulator, right? Banking supervision and so on. OK. So this is a, a couple of courses in this uh, uh, module. So you see that there's financial law. There's a course on derivatives uh, risk management. There's a new course on sustainable finance, which I think is uh, quite interesting. And there's also a course on financial econometrics and so on. OK, so all these are uh, finance courses. OK. So I'm almost done here. I think we will share these slides exposed. So um, so there's a, an important remark to make is that uh, from next year onwards, the program will be uh, somewhat different than the program is at the moment. So there's a reform. So but uh, most of the structure of the program remains the same, right? So also the three modules remain the same. Uh, the biggest change is most in terms of when to put uh, courses at which place and so on. But you can still consult the program on the internet. So this is my email address if you want to ask me uh, a question in person. Uh, there's also a video on the introduction of the program that you have here. And then there's the q program, which was already mentioned uh, several times uh, by other people. So if you want to do the QTEM for the Econ B, uh, this is a program with uh, two exchanges then, and this is a two year and a half program, right? So this is, a, I, I don't go into full detail here. If you want to have more information, just let me know and I will explain everything to you. Okay. So. Thank think you, Thomas. Yeah. Gany. The floor is yours. You can share your PowerPoint. Thank you. OK, so um, welcome. Uh, my name is Gany Aldashev. I'm a director uh, of the master program uh, in economic analysis and European policy. So what uh, is the focus of uh, this uh, master program? Uh, the um, first of all, let me mention a few uh, brief technical issues. The coursework uh, is 90% uh, in English and there are about 10% of courses in French, depending on the choice of the optional courses that you might decide to take. The program has an important international dimension through the uh, exchange programs. Uh, and we also have a double degree program with uh, a very strong uh, university uh, in Italy uh, called Luis uh, in, in Rome. So what's the objective of the program? The objective of the program is essentially to help you get the skills to address all the major economic issues that we're currently facing. OK, and these range from green transition. So how to encourage uh, uh, moving to a more sustainable uh, uh, behavior, both at the consumer level, at the, at the firm level, um, uh, how to combat inequality. What are the good policies uh, to reduce inequality? 
um, how to help uh, to maintain uh, jobs uh, in the world where technology is changing so quickly and there's so many things being automatized. How to organize uh, markets in such a way that there is enough competition so that as consumers we are uh, facing essentially, uh, you know, decent prices uh, uh, so that uh, firms uh, essentially maintain uh, the prices not too high. Uh, how to help uh, maintain uh, growth uh, uh, so the standards of living of the next generation will not be lower that than those of the previous generation. And also in terms of international aspect, uh, how to combat global poverty. All of these issues involve fundamentally debates about policies, uh, including economic policies. And it turns out to be that thinking as an economist uh, is actually very good uh, uh, a very good way of approaching these policies. Of course, policies are not only taking economics into account, there are many other aspects, political, social and so on, but thinking as an economist can provide you an essential set of skills that will help you to uh, simplify this uh, hugely complex issue to a set of very, very basic elements so that uh, understanding the, uh, you know, what are the key points and uh, what are the key uh, mechanisms in, in this policy making uh, are, are, are crucial. Okay, and these policies uh, can happen at, at all kind of levels. So we, we can talk about national policies and taken by say Belgian government or French government, regional, so your European level and even global. So for example, the United Nations or the World Bank and so on. Okay, now what are the job positions that we're targeting with this master? So what kind of skills were, you know, what uh, are appreciated by the, by the employers? Uh, the, the main set will be uh, things like uh, junior level economists or entry level economists in a top international organization. So often something called the young professional program that hire in all of these uh, organizations through the uh, through the door of the YPP programs uh, uh, after the master. And here we're talking about the OECD, European Commission, World Bank, uh, European Central Bank and so on. Uh, we do have also, as one of our targets, uh, training economists, uh, entry-level economists for the key national institutions. For example, uh, National Bank of Belgium or the Ministry of Finance uh, of, uh, of uh, major European countries. Uh, some of our uh, students, ex-students, uh, might also work uh, in the uh, think tanks. And think tanks are somewhat different from the government uh, organizations. They don't directly implement policies, but they're fundamental to think about the policy and provide key input to the policy making about uh, discussing in a much more uh, you know freer way of how to uh, handle uh, you know social issues. So, and one of the uh, best known uh, international think tanks, uh, which is located in Brussels, is Bruegel, very influential. Another one which also has a very strong European dimension is the SEPs and others. Uh, you might also end up working for an international NGO, Amnesty International or uh, Médecins Sans Frontières and so on. In all of these organizations, actually having an economist is a key input because many decisions that have to do with foreign aid, for example, handling foreign aid project involves economic analysis. So in, in that kind of case, you, 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 you might become a very good asset for this kind of organization. And of course, it doesn't exclude the uh, you know, possibility of working for the private sector, in particular for the firms that in the private sector have to do with, with, the, with the public organizations. Okay, so for example, you know, big four uh, consulting firms also hire from our pool of students. Now, uh, let me briefly mention now about the structure uh, of, the, of the program. Uh, the, uh, in the standard structure case, uh, your first uh, uh, block, first year, first uh, two terms will be essentially your core courses, about 45 credits, and the optional uh, or elective courses of 15 credits. And your uh, second block will be uh, either uh, the exchange program, Erasmus, or uh, another 30 credits of, uh, of the elective courses from a large set of courses to choose from. There are another 15 credits of mandatory courses, core, and then there is a, a 15 or maybe now after reform with 20 uh, credits for your uh, master thesis. Okay. Now, in case you have a, uh, you decide to enroll in a double diploma, the one that have to do with uh, one year uh, in Rome uh, at Lewis, uh, the first year will be spent in Brussels and the second year will be spent uh, in Rome. Uh, you might also choose an option, uh, choose a, an opportunity to have uh, an internship in one of those organizations. 
uh, and that internship will uh, typically take place in the uh, in the third uh, uh, semester and it will count for uh, for 25 credits. And uh, if you're really courageous, you might even have a combination uh, of both the exchange, so Erasmus exchange in your second semester and an internship in your third semester. That is also possible, OK? So now uh, let me now finally mention briefly about uh, the type of courses that you might take, so for example, in the standard track. OK, so your courses will include things like uh, courses on institutions and development uh, that focus on the institutional aspects of, uh, of, of developing countries. You might have uh, you will take a course in advanced micro, so that will essentially take your knowledge from your introductory micro courses at the undergraduate level and put it at the, the next at a higher level, get you closer to the to the top uh, frontier of, of knowledge in microeconomics. Uh, similar thing in macro, so Theorie Macroeconomique is the course given in French. Uh, which is essentially bringing you to the frontier of the macro uh, macro knowledge. Uh, then there are several courses that are, uh, you know, uh, that are key inputs for practical policy making in, in economics, which is, you know, impact analysis that teaches you how to evaluate uh, policies, uh, you know, how to evaluate the impact of policies. Uh, uh, the cost benefit analysis, you know, fi uh, crucial financial decisions at, at the public policy making is has to do with the intertemporal aspects and there, you know, knowledge of cost benefit analysis is, is fundamental. Then, of course, since it's a highly quantitative program, you also have a course in applied econometrics and how to handle data, you know, make sense out of the, uh, the data that uh, you might be uh, having access to. And uh, uh, some of the uh, knowledge that you will be reading as, as an economist require knowledge of the advanced mathematical techniques. And uh, some of these articles are quite technical often. So therefore, we need uh, to have a course in mathematics and economic model to know how uh, those articles are written. OK, and finally, there are courses in statistics uh, and in game theory, because a lot of uh, things uh, in, in the current uh, economic policy have to take into account the strategic interdependencies. And for this, a game theory course is a wonderful input. OK, so these are the core courses. Then uh, you'll be putting them at application uh, in, in several occasions. So first of all, you have a seminar on econometrics, by the way, taught, uh, taught by, by Thomas, who, who just talked to you a few minutes ago. And in, in that seminar, you'll be handling data sets yourself. So you'll be essentially applying your econometric knowledge to real life data sets uh, and uh, trying to see whether you can make sense out of data uh, using uh, those econometric packages that you learned. OK, of course, natural uh, application of the skills that you learn is a master thesis on a policy topic. And there's also a course in project management where essentially you'll be thinking about the implementation of the policies in real life. OK, and now and the finally last point is that you have a rich set of electives. Uh, they are grouped into three modules. There is a model that has to do with the international aspects uh, of, of economics and it's called Europe and the world. There is another one which underlines more the aspect of uh, innovation and technological change. It's called innovation in markets. And there is the last but not least, there is also another uh, set of uh, courses grouped into modules that has to do with the social aspects. So social economic policy is a very important uh, part as well. OK, so that's essentially in brief uh, the, the what this program is about. OK, so I think I would uh, stop at this stage. Thank you, Gany. Uh, Mathieu, you can share your PowerPoint now. OK, perfect. OK. Um, okay. Well, thank you uh, first very much for organizing this and welcome to uh, to everyone. Uh, so Mathieu Paranti, I'm the director of the uh, research uh, master uh, in economics and uh, statistics and the director of uh, the ICARES uh, doctoral school. So um, sorry, there's a bit of a technique. Okay. Okay, so um, you know what is the what is the research master? Um, you know, the the research master is kind of the natural uh, continuation uh, of um, a typical master program uh, in which all of a sudden uh, you find yourself passionate 
about a topic, about a field, uh, and who want to start uh, doing research about it. So that's a typical profile of applicant uh, to the research master. It can be a first year student in a master in economic analysis and European policy uh, that Annie uh, just described. It can also be an international student uh, to previous master. Uh, so this is de facto a very national uh, program. Uh, we have students from all over the place uh, every year. And the objective of this uh, master is simple and uh, is to uh, basically prepare you to pursue a PhD in economics and or uh, statistics. OK, so what the program uh, consists of is a series of courses, seminars and activities in general where you're going to acquire the tools and the knowledge to carry out independent research. So you're going to have a series of electives that going, uh, are going to take you uh, to, uh, to the research frontier so that you are able to master the state of the art literature and ask yourself the research questions of your interest. One thing I want to uh, emphasize right away is that the moment you, you, know, you apply and you enter the research master, you are basically already starting a PhD. Now, so there's a bit of um, you know, European uh, taxonomy here, uh, where we think we need a research master from a PhD. Um, if you look at the definition of a PhD program on the other side of the Atlantic, and typically what we call a research master here corresponds to the first years of a PhD program over there. Okay, and those first years are basically the first years of your training, uh, which are quite intense. I learn and going to prepare you to your own uh, your own research okay so uh, at Solve there are two uh, tracks and there's the research in economics and the research in economics and statistics tracks uh, but de facto there are um, in the three um, uh, different paths that you can follow the first one is uh, the research in economics the second one is research in economics and statistics with mostly economics. And the third one is research in economics and statistics with mostly statistics. OK, so the difference in we try is basically how much statistics uh, uh, you're going to have in the program. So to uh, specify right away by statistics here, we do not mean uh, econometrics. Uh, econometrics is a core part of those three tracks, whether you choose research in economics or research in economics and statistics with statistics, you will learn uh, you know, um, research frontier tools in econometrics to do, uh, to do your research. The structure of these three tracks um, is the same is about learning the fundamentals and right? so a series of compulsory courses okay i typically uh, tell students who start research master you know might not be the most interesting one but it's a necessary one and it's a necessary one for the second year and in the second year, that's where basically each student has its own um, bundle portfolio of courses uh, we try as much as possible to make it a la carte our students follow the electives that are close to their own interest, and whether you want to study corporate tax avoidance, inequality, poverty, the economic impact of climate change, uh, all of these uh, correspond to a series of courses uh, that uh, we can help you uh, choose. So in the second year, you're going to choose a series of electives, and of course, uh, as is the case of the other programs, the uh, big challenge of the second year is about writing your uh, master thesis. And in the case of the research master, uh, the master thesis has a special meaning because very often this is going to be the first tone of the PhD that follows. Uh, so in most cases, what has been the master, the master thesis during the research master evolves naturally in the first chapter of a PhD dissertation. So to be a bit more concrete, 
about uh, the different uh, courses. Uh, so in the first year, as I said, it's mostly about compulsory courses. That's where you have graduate micro, macro, econometric. So there uh, we go through some uh, notions that you've already had through either your previous master, either your first year of the previous master and bachelor. Okay. We go back to these basics and we're going to uh, bring you uh, step by step to uh, the frontier in those different areas. And so it's important that at the end of the first year, uh, you have some general knowledge and did not structure of uh, the state of the art in, uh, in economics. And as you see, uh, in the first year, it's really open. Um, there's equal weight, but on the tools to do qualitative analysis, uh, that's the econometrics. There's some weight put on microeconomics, there's some weight put on macroeconomics, uh, so it's very open. And again, uh, the idea is to open your mind and to um, as many uh, research questions as possible. And, um, together with these core courses, uh, you have three additional courses that you see at the bottom of compulsory courses, research topics, dynamic optimization, mathematics and economic modeling were there. Uh, we're going to um, teach you some tools that are going to be relevant, especially uh, to conduct some research in economics. The course entitled Research Topics uh, basically consists in professors from ICARES telling you about their research, uh, presenting their actual research, telling you, you know, what is the research frontier in their field, um, potentially giving you ideas about uh, your future research. In the year, specialization, uh, you have some specialization courses, that's the electives I was uh, mentioning before, and uh, the master thesis. An important component of uh, the research master that you see here is the research seminar. Uh, so the moment you start the research master, uh, you're going to become part of you know, the ICAS community, uh, the research community. And so you're going to interact with, of course, other students in your cohort, but also PhD students, postdoctoral students, professors. We're all going to attend the same seminars, um, hopefully not virtual anymore uh, soon. And you're going to exchange ideas and basically become a researcher of your own. The program in research and economics and statistics uh, is uh, very similar to the one in economics I just presented. One difference is that in the core courses of the first year, uh, there is, of course, more emphasis on statistics. Uh, we graduate statistics, time series analysis, and uh, stochastic models. What are the specialization courses? So some of these you've heard before, you mentioned by Thomas or by Gani. Others you have not. And so you have a mix of uh, courses which are offered in other masters, which are also specific to the research master, and also courses that you can follow with our partner universities. Again, the idea here is that you are able to select a portfolio of courses which reflect your own research taste, uh, your own research ideas. And so again here, and we try to be as flexible as possible simply by offering you uh, the largest possible portfolio of, uh, of courses. So uh, to be a bit more uh, concrete, I would want to just to give you an example of, you know, what our research master students do these days, uh, you know, December 2020. So this is an example of a second year research master student, Florine. And so what uh, Florid studies uh, these days, and uh, she's thinking of conducting a PhD on this topic, she's asking the following question. She's asking what makes people buy eco-friendly goods? What makes people say buy organic products versus not? What makes people care about uh, their carbon print? Uh, what makes people care about more generally uh, the impact of consumption on the environment? She looks into the determinants of these consumption patterns and she investigates very broadly 
Is this something which is triggered, say, by demonstrations, by the attention that media give to this demonstration? Is this also something triggered by social media, uh, say the tweets of Greta Thunberg? Is it something triggered by recent episodes of heat waves? Is it their education? Is it the parents' education? Okay, so you see, this can go in many different ways. And so, how can she, uh, you know, how is she thinking to? answer uh, this question, okay, well, she's going to have a new data set on geolocalized individual barcode level in data in Belgium, but here she's going to have a huge data set where she's going to observe the basket of the goods bought in Belgian supermarkets over weeks of all the different goods at all different prices, and so she's going to be able to track how the consumption patterns of these individuals change across time and across space. And using this data, she's going to try to see what are the main determinants of these uh, consumption of eco-friendly goods. This is one example of a research topic, uh, and for it only in the second year of the research master, and this might be uh, something that consists, um, so that starts uh, a um, a PhD proposal and a future a PhD chapter. That's one example among many others. We have students looking at the impact of robotization, how robotization impacts the labor market. Uh, you have some jobs now that become obsolete because the task of people employed in those jobs are now auto, auto, um, automatized and replaced by robots. This has an impact on opportunities in the labor market. And this impact the student has found is actually an equal for men and women. So what the student is looking into is whether robotization in the end has a significant impact on the labor market access for women. Totally different topic. You have another student who is looking into whether robotization that tends to be benefit large multinationals are actually lead to profits that are actually reinvested locally, all of these profits are actually placed, booked in X7. Uh, so to sum up, this to look at whether trade liberalization, uh, or you can think of policies in general uh, that would lead to more profits, may increase corporate tax avoidance. And a third student uh, is also looking at the impact of the COVID-19 crisis and how this is currently changing and reshuffling the cards in terms of uh, the location decision of uh, Belgian households. So it's a completely different topics. Uh, they use very different tools. And these are all topics of uh, students in the research master uh, this year. And so this will uh, very likely uh, lead to uh, one, two, maybe three PhD chapters on these topics. So what does your life as a student in a research master look like? Well, you're not just, I would say, a student in a master. Again, you're a bit more than this. Uh, you're also part of a research community. You're going to be a researcher. Uh, and so what we do when you start the research master is that, first of all, you're, um, you're assigned a PhD coach. Ask all the questions you've ever wanted to ask about research, about a field, about a professor and never dare to ask, you can ask your PhD coach. You will also attend research seminars, and that's where you interact with the faculty, with us, that's where you exchange ideas, that's where you test your own ideas, okay? And also as part of the experience, but also as a possibility uh, to be self-financed, okay? You can, during the research master already, become a research assistant uh, on a project of uh, the faculty. You can also be a teaching assistant. Uh, there's a mix of both this year. What we encourage you to do during the research master is to think already about the next step, uh, and the next step is, uh, is the PhD. So during the research master and during the second year especially, uh, we encourage students to prepare and submit a PhD proposal uh, so ideas to uh, develop a PhD dissertation, which is in general based on your master thesis. So what is the life after the research master? Well, 
if you succeed, uh, you are a PhD student for a duration of three to four years. We, during those three to four years, you will conduct a lot of research. You will also travel a lot, uh, go to uh, different conferences. It's also the, the, the norm that students spend between six months and one year abroad visiting a university. And most of the time, uh, you will also be exchanging ideas with your peers uh, about your research. So, what can you do with all this? Well, uh, Sandra Gani have already uh, you know, mentioned a uh, you know, um, few positions uh, that uh, you can access to with a PhD. So, academia is an obvious one, but it's not the only one. Those international institutions that Gani just mentioned, they also have some positions that are designed, that are ex exactly suited for, uh, for PhDs. Huh? Why is that? Is that because even international institutions, okay, require some some topics a degree of expertise that only a PhD uh, PhD can do. This is true for international institutions, but this is also true in the private sector. Basically, what a PhD thesis does is that it makes you an expert, an expert of a topic with all the necessary tools uh, to um, to share uh, your knowledge and to apply it and to um, policy questions or uh, more generally an interest that uh, any firm in the private sector can have. OK, so um, that's all um, I wanted to tell you. Don't hesitate to reach us huh, if you have any questions on uh, the research master, the PhD thesis, on the modalities to apply, and yeah, you can also contact Anne-Marie Notariani. Uh, but again, don't hesitate. Uh, you have our email addresses. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Mathieu. You. Okay. Okay. Lucy, do, do we want to switch to uh, the questions to the Q and A? Exactly. It's now okay. time for the questions. Uh, so, um, les slides seront-elles accessibles par après? Alors, je suppose que oui, mm -hmm. elles le seront. Euh, vous recevrez certainement un email euh, avec les slides et également, je réponds en même temps à la question juste après, c'est-à-dire est-ce qu'il y aura un podcast du cours avec un lien qui vous permettra de revoir cette présentation. Sachez que si vous, re vous revenez sur cet événement dans votre calendrier, il reste accessible en replay 30 jours. Mais euh, nous allons également euh, le downloader et le mettre sur notre chaîne YouTube. Comme ça, vous pourrez euh, y accéder en toute, toute tranquillité. Alors, ensuite, nous avons une autre question. Qui faut-il contacter pour les programmes d'échange ben, je vais laisser notre collègue y répondre hein, et se présenter peut-être aussi, vite fait. Bonjour, donc je suis Tamara Smuller. Normalement, la plupart d'entre vous ont déjà entendu parler de moi. Euh, J'avais organisé une séance euh, d'information en octobre. Euh, toutes les informations sur les programmes d'échange sont disponibles sur l'UV. Uh, well, I, I should... I should speak in, well, no, I can keep on in French. Uh, tout, pardon, toutes les informations sont sur l'UV. Donc, euh, normalement, dans vos cours de l'UV, vous avez une plateforme qui s'appelle International Relations. Vous pouvez y trouver euh, les documents qui ont été présentés à la séance d'information en octobre, ainsi que l'enregistrement de la séance d'information si vous n'avez pas pu y assister. Et euh, je vais juste ajouter que pour les étudiants qui sont en ingénieur de gestion, il n'y a de toute façon rien à faire cette année si vous comptez faire le master en ingénieur de gestion. Pour les étudiants, par contre, qui sont en bachelier sciences économiques, il peut y avoir des choses à faire maintenant. Euh, si, vous, si vous envisagez de faire un échange ou un programme où il y a une mobilité l'année prochaine, euh, donc euh, il, est, il est temps de vous renseigner si vous n'avez pas encore euh, regardé ces informations. Et alors je voudrais juste ajouter quelque chose par rapport à ce qui a été dit au début dans la présentation. QTEM est bien accessible dans les quatre masters euh, euh, ingénieur de gestion, management science, business economics et economic analysis and policy. Donc pour le dernier, dans le, dans le tableau, il était indiqué que ce n'était pas accessible, mais vous avez bien accès au QTEM aussi. 
Voilà. Alors, si vous avez des questions, n'hésitez pas à me contacter par email. Je suis aussi disponible sur les sur Bookings, sur la plateforme où vous pouvez prendre rendez-vous avec les différents secrétariats. Évidemment, si vous avez une question précise maintenant, allez-y, mais sinon, vous pouvez de toute façon prendre rendez-vous à n'importe quel moment. Merci, Tamara. Um, so, I, I will switch in English because we have English questions. Should we worry about a future Erasmus stage because of the current sanitary uh, situation that may last for another one, two years and choose our master based on our provisions? Gani, you already answer it, but maybe you can. Uh, yeah, so I, I wanted just to add a couple of comments on that. I, yeah. I don't think this is super important to think about at this stage simply because the situation is still very uncertain. Uh, vaccinations are being you know, planned and rolled out, so we really don't know what will happen in a year from now. That's really too too far away as a horizon to think about. So I think, you know, uh, you should really decide on the basis of what you're interested about mostly. I think that's the best guidance. And the the, the rest is, is, is really secondary from that point of view. Yeah, and I can complete this with the fact that we are uh, dealing with that uh, throughout all the year and uh, with uh, Mrs. Schuller, we have plan B's and plan C's uh, in such a situation. So that's not indeed a point for decision making for the future. Thank you. Um, you also answered this, the next question. Do you want to add uh, uh, more answers to, to it? So the question was, uh, it is only with the Master in Business Engineering that we can do both stage and Erasmus. Gany and Hugues, you answer it. Um. Yeah, it's, it's not the only Master uh, by far. And uh, there are two things. Every Master has opportunities of Erasmus versus stage. Um, and have courses also like field projects, which are like stage, like internships. Um, and on top of that, you have the QTEN extension, which is in addition to the masters, where you have the possibility to uh, specialize your your uh, exchange uh, and add a second uh, internship. Thank you. Uh, next question. What would you say to a student hesitating between the Master in Business Engineering and ma Management Science? Does it only depend on preferences? <laughs> Who wants to answer that? We can answer me and Evelyn. <laughs> Evelyn. <laughs> um, so on my side, uh, we have been working uh, hand in hand with uh, Evelyn uh, Van Cook. The director of Magic Science Program here present as well. We have been working on our reforms together to make sure that every program was not the, that the choice you make is not based on I like this course, I don't like this course, etc. It's at, not at all the uh, the idea. The idea is to really to choose a vision. There is one program which is more dedicated about the link between management and technology, and there is one program which is less linked to to that uh, kind of, I would say, uh, application, but much more putting emphasis on uh, soft skills, uh, uh, quant skills, but not uh, necessary in the area of technology. So both are quite quantitative in this respect, but not for the same applications and not necessary with the same concentration. Uh, so it's a question of concentration in competences that you, you can see differently. I don't know if anyone wants to add something. Yeah. yeah, I agree. I think in terms of structure, the, the programs are very similar, but that's the structure. So both in both programs, you can do a stash or 
um, uh, an Erasmus. So in, in that sense, there are no differences, but the main differences are indeed, like you uh, just uh, explained, um, uh, which competences do you want to develop? I think uh, engineering is more based on um, the technological link, uh, the link with the hard uh, science is, is still there. Um, while in management science, we really want to focus on the management. So you will see more courses on HR, um, uh, linking it uh, to, to sustainability, for instance. Um, also, the skills are very important um, with the focus on the skills. It's not that you don't develop it in the other program, but to a lesser extent, like in management science, we will have some courses that also talk about digitalization, but it's not the core of the program, while it will be more core in NG. So I think you really need to look at these differences. Thank you. Uh, we have uh, questions again. Uh, so, uh, toutes les informations pour faire un master à Solvay si nous venons d'HEC Liège ou d'une autre uh, institution, j'imagine. Uh, nous avons mis un contact au sein de la faculté qui est uh, Muriel Cog, qui pourra vous guider um, par rapport aux conditions d'admission au sein de notre faculté. Where can I find information about the tuition fees? We already put the link. It's on the ULB uh, website. Uh, what are the key differences between a master in management science and a master in business economics? Are the career opportunities much different? I think uh, our professors gave answers. Um, um, Josie? Yeah. R regarding the person from HEC Liège, uh, I, I will put the link, but if you go on uulb.be, I will put the link. You have mm -hmm. really a, a menu where you can really, not, not just for admissions, but if you want to have more information, you can go there and, and really dig deeper into the different masters. There is a full program and full information about each of them. Yeah, I will put the website uh, of ULB and our website too. Okay, next question. Uh, the fact that courses are compulsory means that the attendancy is compulsory or we can begin to work while we are studying in master. Who wants to answer that? I perhaps give the, the floor to Uke. Uh, Uke, this is a, a quite common discussion we have, right? Yeah, sorry, I was just putting the link for Audrey Campanaire. Uh, so that it's done, it's done. Uh, yeah. So you say the fact that, uh, yeah, um, yeah, the attendance. Um, well, the attendance is, is depends on on each course. Uh, in the sense that there are courses where uh, works are mostly works to do uh, like homeworks and group works, but uh, aside of a course. But there are some courses where. Uh, there is continuous assessment during the course and where attendance is crucial. And typically the course of strategy, uh, you need to be there. The course of uh, banking, you need to be there because there are activities within the course. So on one side, of course, the idea is to, to, to make courses less, less ex cathedra than before, more interactive, but of course that requires more attendance in a way. So, uh, of course, there might be exceptions uh, as to the, the program uh, for, for people with particular profiles. You can always ask uh, to, to see if there is any kind of uh, specialty you can, you can require, but, uh, but you have to still be able to, to invest uh, the time uh, into your studies given the contract of each master. Uh, the, the, specific, the special cases is for, for example, top sport people or uh, people with uh, any uh, really big issues. They can ask to have a kind of uh, program which is uh, uh, widened in time uh, to be able to better cope with that. Uh, perhaps to just um, add to that comment, um, I think what everyone has to understand, you're entering a master level and um, you have to be 
um, let's say, um, responsible for um, um, uh, organizing yourself. Um, and as Uke already said, there are courses who are more intensive and request, um, let's say, more attendance, um, uh, which does not mean that you don't have to be um, away for other courses. But in general, um, it's really your own responsibility. In my advanced marketing management course, I have uh, always um, questions um, which are going in this direction. I highly recommend uh, to people to assist courses because, again, sometimes in during courses um, you discuss topics uh, which perhaps then also will be matter of the exam uh, or subject of the exam and then it's not in the slides. So what I normally say is um, you have to be responsible to be able to to capture everything what has been discussed and everything what has been taught in the courses. Um, so how you organize yourself to be able to have this, uh, um, let's say, content and knowledge, um, again, that's your own responsibility. Thank you, Sandra. Um, next question. Does age prevent enrollment in these graduate programs? Uh, I'm 30 years old. I work in marketing department, but I'd like to deepen my knowledge in man management science. And I'm from non-EU. Maybe Evelyn, you can answer the um, question. Yeah. Age itself is not a selection criteria. Um, however, we have to make sure that uh, it is, of course, not too long ago um, after your bachelor, just to make sure that you still have your knowledge in statistics um, um, so that um, um, so in normal cases, up to three years uh, after um, after the bachelor program, we don't see this as a problem. If it's longer ago, um, we also look at your experiences, but that's not the idea. We have other programs, however, uh, at Solve that um, are offering the possibility for people with experience. Because I think if you have a lot of experience, um, this is somewhat different than, than the normal master students who are uh, coming uh, from a bachelor. So I think there is another dynamic in the program. So I would really think if you have more than three years of experience, whether that's uh, the right uh, program for you, um, or whether you want to to go to a more advanced uh, master program. Perhaps we can also share some information on the more advanced um, mm -hmm. programs, a link or something um, yeah. for more. Yeah, for more advanced um, uh, students. No problem. Thank you, Evelyn. Um, switch to French. Pouvez-vous nous donner yeah. des infos sur les taux de réussite en master? Est-ce que cela se fait en deux ans en majorité? Quel est le taux d'échec pour comparer avec le bachelier? Bon, là je peux répondre. Euh, premièrement, il faut vous rendre compte d'une chose et que parfois on n'a pas en tête, c'est le fait que euh, il ne s'agit pas de faire, euh, c'est pas des candies et un master et une partie supplémentaire comme avant. Ici, il s'agit vraiment de 3 plus 2 et ces deux ans, c'est un vrai diplôme en au-dessus ou par au-dessus le diplôme de, de bachelier. Ce qui veut dire que le, la première année master est une année assez, je dirais, euh, dense, surtout le premier quadrimestre. Pourquoi Parce qu'au fait, on a des gens qui viennent de différents masters, de différents pays même. Et donc, ça, c'est vraiment une, une richesse de diversité. Mais seulement, euh, cela exige de, de vraiment mettre tout le monde à niveau. Et, et donc, effectivement, euh, parfois, les, les gens sont surpris que la, la première année de master est assez lourde euh, parce qu'ils pensaient que c'était juste un continuum. Et puisqu'on venait de bachelier, qu'on a passé trois ans, ça allait se faire tout seul. Donc, ça ne se fait pas tout seul. Et... Comparer les taux d'échec, c'est vraiment difficile parce que dans le nouveau système avec le, le plan en Bologne où en fait on accumule des, des crédits, euh, on peut réussir, mais beaucoup de gens disent qu'ils ont réussi l'année, mais bon, il faudrait leur demander avec combien de crédits aussi. Donc ce qu'on observe par contre, c'est que, et là je reviens sur le point de ma collègue Sandra Rottenberger, 
c'est que euh, ça vraiment, ça dépend énormément de, de votre discipline personnelle. Oui, ça, ça, ça se fait en deux ans. Nous, on fait tout pour que ça se fasse en deux ans parce que c'est dans ces deux ans-là que vous avez le meilleur suivi, le, le meilleur coaching. Euh, mais malheureusement, force est de constater que depuis que les étudiants ont la possibilité d'accumuler des crédits, de ne pas vraiment rater une année, mais de continuer l'année suivante, euh, bien, on voit qu'au fait, les études s'allongent et que les gens, les gens s'ajournent quelque part eux-mêmes, puisqu'ils disent ben, « j'ai passé ma première année, mais avec 45 crédits ». Or, entre nous, quand vous avez des séminaires, des, beaucoup de travaux à rendre, etc., si vous n'arrivez pas à passer 60 crédits sur une année, la, la probabilité de passer 75 crédits l'année d'après avec beaucoup plus de, de, de choses à faire en termes d'application, etc., devient de plus en plus dure. Donc, euh, vous êtes de toute façon conduit à presque faire une troisième année à ce moment-là. Et donc, c'est ça principalement qui, qui fait la difficulté. C'est de vraiment essayer de, de vous-même prendre, prendre le taureau par les cornes et essayer de garder votre, votre rythme. Merci, Hugues. Euh, alors, je vais traiter les dernières questions. Euh, donc, si on décide de faire un master en management science, l'Erasmus se fait bien au bloc 2, il n'y a rien à faire cette année alors peut-être Evelyne ou Tamara, je ne sais pas si vous voulez répondre à cette question. Je confirme. Ok. L'application se fait quand on est en, en bloc 1, donc en première année du master. Ok. Uh, there's a question where Gani answered already, so I'm not gonna read it. Uh, il y a-t-il des prérequis spécifiques pour le master en recherche Quelles sont les conditions à remplir pour pouvoir obtenir le PhD ah, Mathieu, je vois que tu es occupé à répondre. Je suis en train de taper une réponse, mais du coup, je vais la donner euh, directement. Donc oui, les, les prérequis hein, correspondent en fait euh, au cours d'une première, euh, première année de master en économie. Hein. Donc, si vous prenez par exemple le master euh, d'analyse, euh, donc European euh, Policy, présenté par Daniel Dachef, hein, ça vous donnera un petit peu l'idée euh, des prérequis pour commencer euh, pour commencer le master recherche. Quant aux conditions pour, à remplir pour pouvoir obtenir euh, donc le doctorat, il y en a essentiellement deux. Il y a euh, d'une part euh, terminer votre formation doctorale. Donc, il y a une, la formation doctorale, donc, elle est en partie sur le master recherche, mais elle continue après pendant le doctorat. Il y a une série de 30 crédits au moins supplémentaires qu'il faut valider. 30 crédits qui ne correspondent d'ailleurs pas qu'à des cours, sont aussi des activités de recherche, hein, comme présenter son travail euh, en conférence, en séminaire, euh, etc. Et euh, la deuxième, euh, deuxième part, bien entendu, hein, c'est l'écriture du doctorat, c'est-à-dire trois euh, ou quatre chapitres de thèse hein, qui vont être euh, évalués par euh, votre jury de thèse. Et c'est le jury de thèse qui va déterminer si vous êtes apte à soutenir à votre thèse. Et donc, euh, lorsque euh, la soutenance privée se termine, euh, c'est à ce moment-là que le jury va vous dire si, euh, oui ou non, vous pouvez euh, soutenir votre thèse et donc, euh, après soutenance, obtenir euh, le diplôme de doctorat. Merci. Et alors, la dernière question qui est la plus longue. Si nous suivons en ce moment un bachelier en sciences économiques, orientation générale, et que l'on veut poursuivre avec un master en sciences de gestion, est-ce qu'il y a des cours dans ce master qui étaient déjà abordés pendant le bachelier en ingénieur de gestion, mais qui ne l'étaient pas pendant celui de sciences éco Serait-il donc possible que nous manquions de base Qui souhaiterait répondre à cette question Personne Hugues, peut-être Oui, je, ben, je, c'est pour, pour le Master en Management Science. Oui, c'est vrai, c'est Management Science. Mais... Oui, la question est un peu... Euh, alors. Oui. So, is the question that if you want to follow Management Science, whether you have enough prerequisite if you do the Bachelor in, in Business Economics? Or I think I... it is the question, yes. That's the question. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
no, then um, then you have enough. Um, you have the, the, the right basis for entering into the master in management science, I would say. What we request, for instance, for outsiders to go into the master in management uh, science is that um, um, they have some management background. So we look into the courses, whether they have some management courses in their bachelor. We look whether they have some basics in, in economics. So some uh, courses in economics, two, uh, three courses in economics in their bachelor and whether they have some uh, mathematical statistical skills. So also the basics of uh, uh, management uh, of, of statistics and, and mathematics are in the bachelor program. So that's how we look. And of course, they need to have um, uh, um, an, an, a more than average grade in their bachelor. That's how we assess uh, students coming from other uh, bachelors to come or to enter the uh, master in uh, management science. And I think the boss, the, 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 the bachelor in uh, business economics has these requirements. Um, so yeah, no, no problem to do this transition. OK, thank you, Evelyn. Uh, we have no further question, so I think we will end this event here. Uh, thank you everyone for your presentations. Uh, thank you to the students and uh, see you soon. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.